I'm going to do one more video in this demo series. Uh, it's not very good to leave it this way. As we can see, yeah, it's fully functioning. We can insert, update, delete, and we can navigate through, see all the artworks. But, you know, the truth is, as we said, there are a lot of problems with this. Not only does it not very look very good, you got, you know, not no layout, real layout on the page. Uh, but, of course, the whole idea of... Uh, um, navigation here is just totally sucks. So before we even get into the more advanced topics of validation and so on, I just want to talk about how we discussed the grid view is far better because you can see rows and rows of data. Trouble is we need a details view or something like it in order to do inserting. So let's have both, right? And there's a number of ways we could set this up, but uh, I'm going to do it with uh, two s separate pages, two separate web forms, one for the grid view, and then just for that special case of inserting, we'll use the details view on a different page. Now, there's lots of ways you could do this. You could you know, play with the visibility property, have them showing and hiding on the same page. You could use, if you have something like bootstrap, modal pop-ups and so on, pop-up to insert a new record. Uh, there's all kinds of approaches that are possible, but this one is simple simple and easy to do. So uh, we're going to follow that line at this point in time. So I'm going to add two no more web forms. I'll maybe call it artwork grid. Not a very inventive name, but uh, there you go. And then I'll add another one. Artwork Instead of details, I'll say add because we're just using this strictly to add, right? Okay, so we got two new pages, right? Now here's a kind of chance to show you a couple of uh, useful techniques. You can, when you've done a lot of work getting all your data sources and everything set up right, one thing I can do is in Design View, I can just select them that way. Just click and drag over until they all turn blue. I can copy them and bring them to each page, right? You can't see a data source control on a different page, but you can use the same ones or copies of the same ones, right? Okay, now that's interesting enough, but uh, of course our grid no longer has insert capability. So if you really wanted to have the minimum code required, what we could do is this way, just run the configuration again, right? Using the same connection string, our stored procedures. So yeah, we need our select, we need to be able to update, we need to be able to delete, but we don't have to insert anymore because the grid doesn't have that capability. So technically, to get rid of that stored procedure, one way to do it with the tool here interactively is come up here and just delete it, right? And then when I go to the next, here's where it's looked at what commands we have and what the parameters are, and it will rewrite what the parameters are required. Just a quick test to make sure it is actually working. Let's just look at the source for a second. So you'll notice the main difference here. We have our three commands, delete, select, and update, and we only have parameters for delete and update, right? Don't need any parameters for select at this point in time. So that was one way to get rid of that extra information. Now, just to show you an alternate, if I come over here, if we're just using this for adding or inserting, right? So technically, well, I could just manually delete, right? The update parameters, same thing with the delete parameters. Don't need them, right? Um, do I need the... All I need is the insert command, right? So I could just come up here. Well, I should probably get rid of that blank line too. Be careful I don't want to remove this closing angle bracket here. Okay, for the opening uh, tag of the uh, data source control. But I don't need update. Oh, sorry. Update or select. Need a better mouse pad. <laughs> Anymore. Uh, I don't need delete. All I need is insert, right? So technically speaking, uh, at this stage, I'm too lazy to do it the right way, so I'll do it the long way. Oop, did I take out something there? Okay, there's just a space. All right, so I'll really all I need in this data source on this particular page is just the insert command, right? The stored procedure for that and the parameters to go along with it. So just to show you two different ways, you can do it interactively by running the configuration or just manually yourself. Okay, now coming to the grid view page then, right? It's gonna be very similar to the work we did with the details view, but I'll stick on a grid view instead. 
And so under data here, grid view. Okay. Uh, good idea. At this stage, it's nice to actually name these things. So grid view, uh, GV, artwork. Okay. And I can use that same styling we used before. It comes from DS Artworks. Right. Uh, I can enable paging, sorting, editing, deleting, all those good things. That's all good, right? Uh, if I go into edit columns, okay, so the command field is good. I'll leave that for now, although we'll probably play around with it in a minute. But I'll take out the ID, date finish, just the same kind of cleanup here. I'll just fix the label. Append, I'm going to add a format, so I'll set that to true because I want it both in edit and read-only mode. So this is a date, so curly brace, zero, colon, little d for short date. Okay, description's fine. Value, again, just a format to supply. Curly brace, zero, colon, n2 is what I found I liked using for here. Okay. All right, now we're down to the same thing about the uh, foreign keys. So uh, if you want, I'll, I'll just show you the opposite. I'll take out the text versions, puts a little bit more work on my part here. So I just have the two foreign key fields. I'll turn them, oh, header text. I should have, I don't know if I fixed that on the other one. Art type and artist, get rid of the ID from the title, right? But I'll make these templates. And I'm going to come back to the command field. While I'm here, I'm going to make that a template as well because there's some changes we want to make inside there. All right. So now it gets a little repetitive. I'm doing the same kind of thing uh, for these foreign keys, right? But notice I only have the edit item template to worry about. There is no insert item template in a grid because we don't insert here, right? So I'll grab a drop down list, bind it to the uh, art type ID, the data source, of course, will be my art type list. Oh, now see, I don't have anything here because I have to refresh schema. On this page, I'd never run the select, so it didn't know what there was to offer in terms of choices. Okay, now before I leave, ah, because I chose the uh, integer column, so to speak, notice it is bound to the art type ID. Well, that wouldn't be very good so that in read-only mode, I would be listing those integers, one, two, three, four for the different art types, right? So I want to display the actual text of the art type. So that's something that we wouldn't have to worry about if uh, by choosing the other field and to delete, right? That's the only reason I usually do it the other way around. But that's okay. It's not an extra huge amount of work and reminds us the importance of making sure we check the binding anyway. So I'll maybe do that first. Instead of binding to the artist ID, I'll bind to the full name of the artist, right? Just one way is good enough for the label. Delete the text box, throw in a drop down list, bind it, of course, to the actual foreign key value. Now, again, I'll have to refresh schema. So this would be the artist ID. And I do need two way here for the uh, drop down list. Right? And the data source would be my artist list and refresh schema so I can see what my choices are. Okay, so that's good. We're almost done, believe it or not. Uh, one thing, oh, before I forget though, there's a few things to do in this command column, right? Similar to what we did uh, with that uh, delete functionality in our first page, I want to come over here find the on client click and put in that return space confirm and quote are you sure you want to delete this piece of artwork question mark close the quote round bracket and semicolon Okay, so that's good. So that will at least will pop up that uh, and ask for a confirm. But we want to be able to, when we add, right, I could stick it anywhere on the page, but I kind of like using, this is a command column anyway. So here's the header template. 
So if I stick something up here to make it look consistent, I'll use a link button again, right? So let's stick a link button. They're hard to see is the color right now, but it's easier to see when we're running. So the text on it though, I don't want the word link button. I want add new, right? Now the ID should definitely set an ID here because I'm going to create an event handler for it. BTN works for button as far as I'm concerned. Add new. Right. And that's it. Uh, by the way, I should mention all these other command bu link buttons here. You notice that they have a property called, sorry, command name, right? So edit is the command name edit, update is the command name update and so on. So these are built-in commands of the control itself, the grid view or details view, either one, right? And so by specifying a command name property of a link button, it knows it's to call the hosting controls built-in command with that name. We don't have a command name for this, right? So how am I going to actually do something when I click this button? Well, it has its own event handler. I can just use the click event. Another good reason why I named uh, the button itself. I can just double click there and it comes up and it creates a button add new click event handler, right? So really what I want to do is if I click the add button, I'm going to go to my other page, the one set up to just add new artwork. So I can do that by taking the response and doing a redirect. Where do I want to go when I redirect? Well, I put in a string for the name of the page that I want to go to. I can just, because they're sitting in the same folder, I don't have to worry about paths. I can just use the name of the page. Artwork. <laughs> Add.aspx. So when I click my Add button, it will actually navigate away from this page and go to my Add page, right? Okay. So back here. That's it. I'm done. Right. Let me just check something here in the source. Just want to make sure that that very important data key names property is being set. Right up here, data key names is set to ID. Okay, good. So all my updates and everything in Dewey should be able to work. So that's it. I'm basically done with my grid. I can run it and just see what happens. By the way, now we have multiple pages. So which one will come up? Well, I know I said before that web servers will look for things like default or index first. Uh, in this case, though, while we're working in Visual Studio, whichever page has focus in the designer, that's the one that is initially loaded. So by making sure I've selected the artwork grid, ASPX page, giving that focus in the design tool, that's the one that loads. So I can see here's all my data. I can sort it. I should be able to edit. So I'm seeing the full names of the art type and the artist. So if I edit red dot, I can say, no, it's not a painting, it's decorative art, and save that with an update. And you see that it's actually working, right? I'll put it back. Uh, it's a painting, right? It says right there in the description, painting of a, <laughs> and away we go. Okay, now the add new took me to my other page, which is still blank at this point in time right okay but it is working okay so let's go to the add artwork add page so remember we've already changed this so it only supports insert well i could do it from scratch but you know here's another chance to show you if i take this details view copy come over to the add and put it here right now i do want to make some definitely some changes here though um for one thing okay it uh, knows that it only knows about inserting. It doesn't know about delete or anything anymore. I'll take off paging because it will never need to page. We're just using it for inserting, right? Okay. Uh, I don't think I need to edit fields. Let me just check my templates. That's just uh, my... Uh, well, let me just show you, right? Technically speaking, I could clean things up a bit because I'll never go to item view even, right? I could actually take those out of the templates if I wanted to, right? Uh, and the artist, same thing. I don't really have to have the label. I don't have to have the edit item template. So I'll just take those out. 
and uh, the command, right? Okay, it's fine. Okay, all right, so that's basically it. Now, I, I think I will make a couple other changes. So when it comes up, it's nice to, uh, with the details view sometimes to set a, uh, a header text. That just gives it a, a, a bar across the top that will be in that red color, I believe. So uh, add new artwork. Just so it's very clear what we're here for, right? Add new artwork. However, um, what I'm going to do is change the default mode. Right, so right now it's set the default. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't reuse that word. Uh, normally, a details view will come up in read only mode and then switch into edit or insert mode as required, right? But we're going to set it so it automatically comes up in insert mode. So you see, I've got <laughs> duplication here because I checked off that uh, uh, capability of inserting here. So it's automatically generating this command. So I really don't need both. Um, I could just get rid of my template one. I don't have to do any custom programming inside uh, the built-in command that's going to be at the bottom. Okay, so I'm always going to be in insert mode. Now, how do we handle this though? Oh, actually, no, I sh yeah, no, it's okay. There's more than one way to do things, right? So I'm just thinking that here with my details view, I should give it a name, just like we did with our grid view. So DV artwork. I could even say add artwork, right? How do I know? What if I just want to cancel, right, and go back? I don't want to add after all. Well, I could worry about going in and, you know, accessing this button. But the truth is the um, details view itself has its own set of events, right? If I click the lightning bolt, here are all the events. So there's, notice there's before and after events for things like item created, deleted, deleting, and so on, before and after events. But here's a general one, item command. This is one, no matter what are the built-in commands is called of the actual details view itself, th this event is fired. So it gives us a chance to kind of look and see what command we were asking for and decide what we're going to do about it separately from these specific ones that are only for one command. So I'm going to add an event handler here, right? So it's my details view add artworks item command. And how this is, is okay, there's this E object, which is of type details view command event args, right? So I can find out which command brought me here. If E dot command name. Well, if that equals cancel, right? Then I know they clicked the built-in cancel functionality, right? And so what do I want to do if they don't want to cancel? Well, we're just going to do basically the same thing. We're going to response dot redirect. So everything comes in as a, as a request, but then the response we're going to send back is not to give them this page, but to redirect them to my artwork grid. And that's how I can just go back and forth. Don't forget the semicolon because I am writing C sharp here. Okay. So if I cancel, right, then I'll just redirect back to and won't save anything. won't worry about it. I'll just go back to my grid where I'm listing all the data. And that'll uh, refresh the grid as well because I'm asking the page to reappear, right? Don't have to worry about refresh issues. Okay. Um, just going back here to the actual uh, page. Now, what if we do insert? Well, we saw a minute ago that there are insert before and after events here. There's item inserting and item inserted. And I could use this technically, but as a rule of thumb, I always go, if I'm going to look for an event that happens after saving data or something like that, always work with the data source control. You see, it has events as well. It has before and after events. So there's updating, which happens before the update happens. Updated happens after and so on. So what I'm looking for is the inserted event for my data source for the artwork, right? So here I've successfully inserted 
Okay. Later on, when we talk about database error handling, we'll see it's these after events of the data source is where we come in and we can look for, excuse me, error messages coming from the database. If maybe you're trying to delete a parent record and they were children, things like that, right? Anyway, so we'll only get to this event if we have successfully inserted a new, in this case, piece of artwork. So if that's good, if we did that, we've inserted it, well, what do we want to do? Exactly the same thing. We're going to go back to the grid so they can see the new one that was inserted, right? And as simple as that. Okay, so let's see if this is working. So it'll come up on the add page because that's the one I had, right? So if I click cancel, it should navigate back to my grid. There we go. So there's my grid. If I click the add button, here I am and I can add a new piece of artwork. Um, there we go. Description, big picture of a house. Value is $100. And it is a picture, it is a drawing made by Samuel Hill, right? I'll insert and there it is. We see the new record right there. Okay, I could edit it and say, that wasn't the right title, a big house. And uh, we'll change something else. It's worth $100 and 11 cents. So we can see there the edit is working. Do I want to delete it? Oh, I forgot to put my on client click, I guess, in here. Or did I? Let me just double check. Sorry, I had a typo in there. Uh, that's what I get for hurrying. So <laughs> to be uh, lazy, I just copied and pasted the same on client click that I wrote for the uh, first page, that default page. And so now it comes up. Are you sure you want to delete this record? I can say OK or cancel. If I say OK, there it is gone. OK, so now we have a better functioning, right? The grid always is nice when you got lots and lots of records. Now, it's set for paging, but until I have, I think the default is 10. So until I have 10 records, you won't see the paging footer show up, right, to go on to the next page and so on. But uh, it will show up eventually. But I can click the Add New button to add a new one or cancel, and we've seen that it's all working. So that's just an alternate arrangement. I'm going to post this version of the code, and uh, you can have a look at it. OK. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, you found this helpful. I think that this will relate to the bonus work on the lab.